Good afternoon and welcome to Marriage Moments. And yes, we are back, back from our anniversary celebration and our vision planning retreat. And we're so glad uh, to be with you and um, the service was great this morning. And I don't know if you watched online or you were in our drive-in service, but so thankful for what God is doing amidst the different changes that seemingly are coming every week. I do want to say a big thank you. If you look to your right and my left, our left, you'll see a beautiful picture um, that was created by two couples um, that we love so much. And we just say thank you, thank you, thank you again um, for that. And thank you to all of you for the gifts and the cards and the gift cards and the texts and the emails. You're just so generous and um, and just honoring us for the celebration of our anniversary. And uh, so we were able to get away last week and um, we had a, a wonderful time and really special mm -hmm. moments and then seek the Lord uh, for what is ahead for all of the areas that uh, we are over. And so, honey, you want to say anything? Yes, absolutely. And, and I just, uh, as my wife said, we want to thank you personally. Yes. Um, we had an amazing anniversary celebration, and so much of that was because of you and what you shared, and uh, so generous and kind with your words, and um, just spoke into our hearts. And so, thank you. Thank you very much for all of that. Yeah. So today what we're doing is you should have a handout that was sent to you and hopefully you watch the intro trailer of our new study. So we're going to just introduce it to you and have a few comments. And I want to give you a bit of an assignment. You've got homework this week, <laughs> you guys, um, just uh, from a passage of scripture. But let's go ahead and pray. Yes, amen. Well, Father, we come before you once again this afternoon. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for each and every person that is viewing this online. And we just pray that you will use uh, not only today, but this entire series in a very powerful way to minister to couples in various seasons of their life and uh, what they're going through. Lord, we do believe that uh, you have this for such a time as this. And so, Father, we just pray your anointing upon us as we share, but upon each person that we'll be viewing here. Amen. And Lord, um, the words that are in my heart today is, Lord, you can have my heart. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we give our heart to you, our life to you at some initial time that we come to Christ. But Lord, in my heart this morning is, Lord, you can have my heart yes. all over again, Lord. And Father, I pray that couples would even give you not only their hearts today, but they would lay their marriages on the altar. Lord, even if yesterday was a great, great day, and Lord, they got along well, Lord, we need to place our marriages on the altar and our hearts before you, Lord, because everything comes from our heart, Lord. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Lord. So many times our mouth gets us into trouble yes. in our marriage because what's in our heart hasn't been healed or hasn't been made right or, or we're, we're not aware or we're running past in our life where we're not taking time to position ourselves before you. So right, right at the get-go this morning or this afternoon, Lord, I just pray, God, that we would give you our hearts, yes. Lord. Amen. And then in giving you our hearts, Lord, our ears would be open yes. to listen to your word today and the comments, Lord, that we feel that you want us to say about our new study. Yes. So, Father, we thank you that your, your spirit is in homes, upon marriages, and families, God, and that you're working on behalf of your purposes in all of our lives, God. And even when we are slow to run to you, Lord, we're slow to come to you, Lord. You are reaching for us yes. and, and you are causing circumstances on behalf of your purposes, God, in our lives and in our marriage to be accomplished for the good, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Yes. 
Thank you, Lord. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 I feel his, his arms reaching for you today. Yes. So just allow that process to happen. All right. Amen. Well, the study that we're going into, it's called Cherish. Cherish. Wow, that's not a word that we use a lot, right? Very often, no. Not, not <laughs> very often. But do you know the difference in uh, the word love, between the word love and cherish? Yeah. We're not really going to explain <clears throat> that today. You can look it up this week if you want to. <laughs> but we're going to really dive into that next week. But we do want to just introduce this study, kind of give you um, an idea of where we're going. Yeah. I think most of us, uh, if you recall back to your wedding vows, uh, so in many wedding vows, there is the phrase that says to love and to cherish until death do us part. And we, we kind of run that together, love and to cherish. And uh, so many of us, I... I remember on our wedding day, I was just standing there, uh, just hoping I could remember what to say, and uh, did I really know what I was saying? <laughs> yeah. But to love and to cherish, and like I said, we kind of throw those two words together, and yet they are so, uh, they go together, but there's definitely different meanings in those, and so that's what we're really gonna be talking about, um, about th those differences, and uh, sometimes one comes easily, other, the other does not. And uh, so trust that you're going to be blessed as a result of this uh, in, in all of the, the sessions that we will be doing. So most of us understand and get um, the love part. We've taught a lot and we'll teach next week. We'll use 1 Corinthians 13. Um, but what does it mean to cherish our spouse? That's a deeper word. Yeah. And um, we don't always do it so well. So why do we say it once on our wedding day and then we rarely mention it again at, as a couple? And so that's a, a big question. So next Sunday we begin a six session Bible study um, and the author and speaker on the video session will be Gary Thomas. Yes. Uh, he's also a pastor, uh, which will, he will teach and show us from the Bible um, how to cherish our spouse and how we can learn better as a couple to cherish one another. So um, Gary Thomas actually says, makes two quotes, <coughs> excuse me so much, um, <coughs> excuse me, you want to read those, honey, my sure. voice. The, uh, <coughs> his statements was that cherish turns an obligation into a delight. Yeah. Think about that one for just a moment. Cherish turns an obligation into a delight. So can we talk about that sure. for just a moment? So, you know, it never, it never blesses, I'll say that word, it never blesses our spouse whenever we come to them with a, well, I have to do this. I have to respect you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that. <laughs> or the husband says, well, I have to love you because it says that in Ephesians. <laughs> so that is not what we're talking about as far as cherish. <laughs> so cherish turns an obligation, what might be an obligation to us into something we want to do. Yes. And he uses the word delight, yeah. another word that we don't use often, but it's used several times in scripture. And then cherish is a melody. I love to sing, yes. I love to play the keyboard, so that I love that. Cherish is a melody that makes a marriage sing. So in other like words, that. yeah, so in other words, when we learn more, how to cherish each other. There's like a melody mm -hmm. in, in our marriage. That's so awesome. You know, so many couples seem to grit their teeth um, on and just hang on to their marriage or mm -hmm. just hanging on. And many years ago, whenever we just thought we were gonna have to make do, we read 
again, Ephesians 5 and the Holy Spirit really talk to us. Um, and, and then the other part in, in Ephesians where it says that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So that doesn't sound like gritting our teeth and hanging on and making do, right. does it? Not no, at not at all. So, you know, if you're a couple that have lately been gritting your teeth, we're kind of having a good time with that. But really, when I read that and I read those words, there are some people yes. that are gritting their teeth. That's that's where they're they're at. They don't really want a divorce. They have children. And maybe some even have grandchildren, and they're having to just hang on and grit their teeth just day by day sometimes. And some moments are a little better than others. But God wants that lifted. He wants to heal that. And our participant participation is to begin to learn how to cherish each other. God is so much more for our marriage than that. Cherishing your spouse and your spouse cherishing you breathes new life into your marriage. Isn't that good news? Like, <laughs> God is new going life. to bring <clears throat> right. and breathe new life into your marriage. And even a marriage that has been marred by neglect, disrespect, harshness, horrible words, horrible actions, even that kind of marriage, it can breathe new life in. And I think uh, a lot of us, especially we who are believers, followers of Christ, know what God's Word says, uh, believe that marriage is a covenant, and we don't believe in divorce. And so sometimes the enemy can even turn that where, okay, well, then we're just going to have to grind this out yeah. and make do but that is just such a lie. And so what we, our desire is to help you to really get a hold of that word cherish as it connects with, with love. And this is gonna be an, an, an awesome help to you. The series that we're about to go into is six sessions. And I'm just gonna kind of give you the titles of that just to kind of whet your appetite for that. Uh, uh, the first one is to love and to cherish. The second one is your honor. And that's not talking about the judge, but your honor as the person. The third one, a ta a taking your marriage to the next level. Have you kind of settled there? Or taking it to the next level. Fourth one is cherishing your unique spouse. My wife is, is unique and I am unique in, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't always appreciate the no. uniqueness, nor do we always help pull that out. Yeah, that's right. The uniqueness. Mm -hmm. We resist the uniqueness sometimes. Yes. And we resent the uniqueness. That's right. And we don't appreciate the uniqueness right. sometimes. We try to make them like us. Yes. 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 Uh, the fifth session we're going to talk about is this is how your spouse stumbles mm. to really understand that your spouse and where they're at on that. And then the last one is keep on cherishing. Just keep on cherishing. Yeah. And so trust that you're going to be blessed by each and every one of these. Yeah. Uh, the, now, the Word of God tells us um, in Ephesians 5, uh, it gives very clear instructions to the husbands and the wives. And we say so often that if we will follow God's plan, uh, we will have a successful marriage. Uh, the challenge is that when we get off track or we refuse to do what God's word says, and he gives very clear instructions in Ephesians 5. And so I just wanna read that to you. And this is coming out of the Amplified Bible. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And it says, husbands, love your wives, seek the highest good for her, and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God, so that in turn he might present the church to himself 
in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be wholly set apart for God and blameless. Even so, husbands sh should and are morally obligated to love their own wives as, uh, as being in, in a sense their own bodies. I'm having trouble here. <laughs> are you he, he, stumbling I'm over stumbling. that part? I've got, to, I've got to get my glasses. No, it's just my glasses. <laughs> uh, he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own body, but instead he nourishes and protects and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members, parts of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined and be faithfully devoted to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery of two becoming one is great, but I am speaking with reference to the relationship of Christ and the church. However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife as his very self, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. And the wife must see to it that she respects and delights, there's that word again, there it is. respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. You know, um, in verses 26 and 27, we see the word so that, and if you can just circle in verse 26, so that, and then in verse 27, so that, and if you can write in the margin of your paper, um, that, that means uh, for the purpose of. So you can amplify the amplified, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And the meaning of that is very powerful for the purpose of. But um, so this is your assignment. So gentlemen, husbands, this week, I want you to reread um, verses 25 through 33 in your part and ask yourself the questions are you loving your wives? Um, are you seeking the highest good for her? And that, that's not just on Saturday or on Sunday, but is it every day? Is it consistently? Are you surrounding her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ loved the church? Yes. And then verse 26, so that for the purpose of that he might sanctify the church, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word of God. Verse 27, so that in turn he might present the church, talking about Christ, to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. I love spot or wrinkle, those words, because, you know, <laughs> as I get more seasons, I see spots and I see wrinkles. And so, present me, honey. Present me yes. without spot or wrinkle. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> that was in our, not in our notes, so. Um, okay. Even so, husbands should and are morally obligated to love their wives as being, in a sense, their own body. Yes. So, gentlemen, do you nourish and cherish your wife like you do your own body? Do you care for her that consistently as you care for your own body? Most men, they say women primp, but men... I don't know what word that would be for men, but they get ready. They get themselves ready. And they... I'm not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't need to say any more. For no one ever hated his own body, but instead he nourishes yes. and protects and cherishes. So, do you nourish your spouse, your wife? Mm -hmm. Do you protect her? We're talking consistently. Yes. Not every once in a while. Do you cherish her? Do you cherish her? Okay, and um, 
So you get the idea. Go through that passage and ask yourself, is that how you are toward your wife? Mm -hmm. And any area that you feel a little prompted or, or like the Holy Spirit is, is pricking your heart on, that's an area that God wants to help you grow in. Mm -hmm. It's an area that that's maybe right. your wife is even praying about it, but she hasn't said anything, but her heart is longing to be cherished. Her heart is longing to feel that protection more of her husband. Okay, that's enough for the husbands, you know? I don't want them to feel like we're picking on them. So girls, here we go. Down to verse 33. And you might think, well, look at that. You know, God's talking to all the guy. Whoop, whoop. But here we go for the, for the wives. Mm -hmm. this is it. Okay. And the wife must see to it mm -hmm. that she respects and delights. Just work. Look at that word, ladies, delight. And are you respecting your husband? Are you delighting in your husband? When he tells you one of his jokes that he's told you for years, <laughs> do you? <laughs> Hypothetically, right? <laughs> That's a lot of jokes. <laughs> With a lot of years, honey. <laughs> do you roll your eyes or do you smile and do you laugh? <laughs> Gracious laugh. <laughs> do you laugh in faith? Yeah. <laughs> um, that she notices in him. She notices him. So when he walks in the room, do you look and do you notice him? You know, we love that as women for for our husbands to notice us when we like come down the stairs or we walk into the family room where he might be and he notices, oh, babe, you, you look wonderful today. Oh, hi, babe. Like, woo woo, you know, those kinds of things that are between you as a husband and wife. Um, that she notices him and she prefers him. I wanna just hang on that word just a moment. I was reading an article this last week about different types of affairs. And it was so thought provoking, ladies. Sometimes we only think of like affairs, like a transfer of affection from one, um, the opposite sex. But in this particular article, it was challenging the readers to consider different types of affairs. And one of those is, um, and I don't mean this weird like incest or anything, but do you prefer, in other words, being with your sister or a husband? Do you prefer being with your brother over time with your spouse? So ladies, do you prefer being with your husband? Do you prefer him over the children? Do you prefer him? Time with him? Loving him? Okay. And treat him with not just concern, but loving concern. Now, ladies, that does not say loving nagging. That says <laughs> loving concern. Treasuring him. Look that word up. What is a treasure? What is a treasure? You know, the Bible says that we have this treasure in our earthen vessel. So that treasure in Scripture means Jesus Christ. But do you feel and believe and treat your husband like he is a treasure? Honoring him and holding him dear. Is your husband an inconvenience to you? Or do you hold him dear? Do you prefer him? Do you treat him with loving concern? So husbands, go through this passage and ask yourself before the Lord those questions. And then ladies, wives, go through especially verse 33 on our part and your assignment this week is get before the Lord 
and ask the Lord, do I do this? You, you already know. When I read this passage again this morning, um, and I was just looking at this, and I felt the Holy Spirit ask me, is that how I treat my husband? Is that how I honor him? Is that how I respect him? Is that how I love him? And so that is the assignment for today. And, and again, remember, um, we don't want you to ask each other Honey, do I love you this way? Do I treat you this way? No. No, you need to do this before the Lord in your individual prayer time. All right? And then, as you, this week, you just come together and you pray. And if you want to talk about it, like what the Lord showed you, like, for instance, let's say the wife says to the husband, and he, whenever Pastor Gwen said it's not loving nagging, it's loving concern, I feel like there are sometimes my words might like be received more nagging. And honestly, the Lord showed me that sometimes I am nagging. And so it's not loving concern, it's more nagging. The, the Holy Spirit searches all things. Remember our scripture last week i think it was first corinthians 2 where the verse 10 i believe the holy spirit searches yeah. all things yes. and so the holy spirit knows where we need to improve in order that we can implement not only love in our marriage but also cherishing i think it's important too that as you read this uh, don't fall into the trap of well, you know, if she would do if she would do her part, then yeah. I would do my part. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we men we want to read her part, and the wives want to read the men's part to remind uh, each other. Which I, I also think it's kind of interesting in that particular passage. I just realized there's nine verses talking to us men, and there's only a couple of verses talking to the women. So, uh, guys, I think there's uh, there's something to be said about that. We really need to focus upon this and am I truly being obedient to the word and to because we are the initiators and if we are doing our part initiating that then that puts our wives in a position to be able to re, be obedient to what God's word has called them to be too so again as my wife has said read these pray over it just say allow the Holy Spirit to just put that magnifying glass on you and show you those areas that maybe you are just a little bit weak in and need uh, to, to work on. Yeah, so before we pray, I just really sense the Holy Spirit, um, from the Holy Spirit, that there is at least one wife, there might be more than one, that just in what you just said, honey, that um, we implement the Word and the instruction in the Word and, and we do it and we're assertive with it um, even if our spouse is not That's implementing right. it. <clears throat> That's right. And when, when you said that, I, it's like I saw a wife like that her shoulders were down from discouragement because her husband has been excited this afternoon by these scriptures and by this message and he is saying things like like oh God is touching me and he's very sincere and he's very authentic in his heart and yet the wife has a thought now now after I've begged after I've cried after I've almost wanted to hit the wall, now, now he gets it. But the Lord wants to say to you, now is the time. Now is the time. And let it be. Let your husband receive the, in, 
the infilling of what God wants to do at this moment, and God will heal Amen. your marriage. You know, if we looked at verse 21 in Ephesians 5, it says, wives, submit to your husbands. The verse before that says, submit to one another out of the reverence of Christ. And for you, dear wife, that's where you need to start today. Submit to the Lord yes. out of the reverence of Christ. And when you part there and you position yourself, and I can, I'll even say where you put your face to the ground because you will need to weep before the Lord in order for him to take away the hurt and heal your broken heart. Please hear this today. Yes. You will not be healed if you don't position yourself before God and let him heal your broken heart. Your husband cannot heal your broken heart. That's right. But God can. So in that healing process, then the Lord will open your heart back up again for the love of your husband. The Lord will open your heart back up again to be able to begin trusting the words and the actions and the touches and the advances of your husband. Right now, you resent them. You resent them. And so you're just thinking right now, oh my goodness, the Lord is reading my mail. Yes, he is. And he's not doing it to expose you. He's doing it to expose the enemy. That's right. And so the Lord is saying to you, position yourself before him and let him position himself within your husband so that your husband will also be on his face and also be on his knees and know that without God's help, your marriage will not make it. I don't say that very often. But I feel that is what the Lord is saying to me today. If you both don't position yourselves before the Lord on your faces, repent of what has been wrong, acknowledge it, and repent of it, and then purpose in your hearts that you are going to stand up and walk in the word, that there's a line drawn in the sand today, this afternoon. Yes. There's a line drawn in the sand. I will not go back to past behavior. I will not go back to those words. I will never, ever, ever use the word divorce again. Never, ever, ever. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm stepping forward. And even if I see my spouse like crawling to get to that line that's been drawn in the sand, I'm going to love them. I'm going to treat them with kindness. I'm going to have loving concern. I'm going to honor and respect. I'm going to do what I am supposed to do before the Lord as an offering of worship. And the Lord will take that because that's a sweet aroma yes. to Him. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we are just so thankful for this afternoon for your word and how it speaks to each and every one of us in, in different ways and lord we pray that every person that is viewing now and will view it later father will be just uh challenged to really evaluate where they are in their marriage relationship father we have kind of focused upon that word cherishing and lord as we go through the next six weeks i pray god that you will use it in just such a way to help us to really realize the importance and, and we'll begin to talk about the differences of, of love and to cherish Father. So Lord, I pray for that couple, those couples who uh, I believe God that my wife has spoken to very directly this afternoon. And Lord, I just pray that their hearts will be re receive the word that has come forth for them here today. Father, your word says, come to me all you who are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. Yes. Lord, there, there's so many times 
that we can just be at unrest and we're anxious and, and we're trying to make something happen. But what we need to do again is position ourselves before the, you at the foot of the cross and remember, remember Jesus, remember the price he paid, remember the blood he shed, remember the stripes that he bore so that we can have the resurrection power of Jesus yes, Christ yes. within us and within mm -hmm. our marriage. And we can walk in that, yes. not just in one day or this week or three months, but for eternity's yes. sake, together Amen. forever. Lord, we are here today because we believe in marriage. We believe in covenant. We believe that with implementing the word of God and putting it into action and praying together as a couple and praying over our spouse as Mike and Bridget taught last yes. week, Father, that we can have an abundant marriage Amen. that's full of life, mm -hmm. not dry dead bones. Father, the choice is ours. Mm -hmm. We're at the starting line today, God. And Lord, we can run the race with perseverance or not. We can choose to forgive or not. Yes. We can choose to love yes. and be aware and notice or not, God. We can go up in our shell or in our man cave. We can stonewall. We can not talk. We can say bad words. We, we can do all that, Lord, or we can live for you. Or we can walk with you and see what you can do with two people that are totally dedicated, that love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. The choice is ours. It's a call from the Spirit today, Lord. It's not just our words. It's not just our call. Lord, one of these days we won't be here. One of these days you'll call us home. Or one of these days we'll be at a different place. We don't know. But God, this is a call of the Holy Spirit. This is your heart, God. You're talking to couples today, Lord. So, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would do your work, yes. that we would allow you, yes, and we would receive it, Lord. We don't have to beg for it. We just need to open our arms and receive all that you have for us today. Yes. So, Father, we pray that even this week, Lord, as each husband and each wife gets alone with you, and, Lord, that they began to go down these scriptures, Lord, Ephesians 25 through 33. And they just ask, do I love my wife this way? Do I love my husband this way? That, Lord, they are honest yes. before you. And your Holy Spirit searches their hearts and brings up that which the enemy wants to keep stuff down. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Your word tells us that we are more than conquerors Amen. through Jesus Christ. Not our own abilities, mm -hmm. but through Jesus Christ. Right. I pray for revivals this week in marriages, revivals in homes, and because of that, revivals in families. Yes. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you in Jesus' holy, matchless name. Amen. 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 We love you so much. We just thank the Lord for you. Listen, the Lord's calling us. The Lord is calling us. Friends, the Lord is calling us. Don't, don't, don't lag behind. The Lord is calling us to step up and step out. It's our choice. It's my choice. It's my husband's choice. It's your choice today. Bless you. Have a great, great week.